Reading students, this is the final week of the first set of weeks giving you a foundation in missiology. As we've looked at the history, the current situation and the frontiers of, of mission over the last three weeks, you might have noticed a reoccurring question. What about mission is universal, never changes, cannot change, and what about mission changes according to the context? Bevins and Schroeder have written the classic text, Constants in Context, which goes deeper into the paradox of contextualization and universal application of mission and looks at different models for what stays and what goes. Again, I'm going to do two videos this week because it's a lot of material. So this is video number one. Bevins and Schroeder start by talking about the biblical imperative of the contextualization of mission, and they use the book of Acts to prove their case. That from the very beginning of the Christian church, there has been a conversation about what is universal and what is contextual, and an understanding that there can be different ways that mission is done in different contexts, that the message, the core of the message doesn't shift, but the communication of the message shifts. They lift up a set of questions in that, that get asked over and over again in that process. As the church has explored, what can change and what doesn't change, these are the questions that have been asked. The first constant question has to do with Christology. Who exactly is Jesus Christ and what is his meaning? What has to be constant about that and what can change contextually? Question number two, ecclesiology. What is the nature of the Christian church? What is the constant nature of the Christian church? What can change in different eras and in different cultures? The third question is eschatology. How does the church regard its eschatological future? The fourth question is soteria, soteriology, which is the question of salvation. What is the nature of salvation? What is the universal, unchangeable nature of salvation? And how can our understanding of salvation legitimately change in different contextual contexts? Question number five is anthropology. And the way that Bevins and Schroeder state this question is how does the church value the human? But as I read their work and study their work, I think they're really asking, how does the church evaluate the human? And of course, you can see in these little pictures that part of that question is, how much is the human being good because we are made in the image of God? And how much is that image tarnished or corrupted or destroyed by the fall? Question number six is the relationship to the culture, to culture in general. What is the value of human culture as the context in which the gospel is preached? So you can see here a wineskin. That's what wineskins look like. <laughs> Bevins and Schroeder describe three different matrices of answers to these questions that have existed throughout the history of Christianity. They quote Justo Gonzalez, who talked about, as a historian of the church, talked about three different theologies, and Dorothy Soleil, who talked about three different paradigms. But what Justo Gonzalez, his three theologies and her three paradigms are essentially the same, so Bevins and Schroeder have combined them. So this is the way that paradigm A, which is how uh, Justo Gonzalez described them only as A, B, and C. Dorothy Soleil added some descriptors. So 
This is paradigm A, according to Justo Gonzalez. According to Dorothy Soleil, it's the orthodox conservative paradigm. And Bevis and Schroeder say that the word that might be best used to describe this paradigm is law. That is a paradigm of understanding mission as essentially saving souls and extending or growing the church. So the Christological question in this paradigm is answered with a focus on a high understanding of Christ, meaning more focus on his divinity than his humanity, um, an understanding of the work of Christ as redemption, and the nature of that redemption as atonement, or what Tertullian would call satisfaction, because Tertullian was a lawyer, and so that was a legal term for talking about what Christ accomplished. The understanding of, of Christ is that what he offers is exclusive, that it only comes through faith in the Christ described in the New Testament. The ecclesiology that goes along with this paradigm, Bevins and Schroeder describe as institutional. Now, they're talking primarily in a Catholic context when they say that, that it is the institution of the church where people find Christ and where they find salvation. Um, he, he says this is, there is a version of this in the Protestant context, although of course, Protestant and Catholic ecclesiology are very different. But uh, it is true that growing the church is, is a critically important task in this, in a, the Protestant or evangelical version of this paradigm. So church growth is paramount, even though Protestants don't think of the institution of the church in the same way that Catholics do. The understanding of salvation in this paradigm is spiritual. It's the salvation of souls. Um, it's accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior and being saved and being saved for heaven. Um, the anthropology is negative, which doesn't mean that this paradigm doesn't believe in the, that people are made in the image of God, but just that that image is profoundly marred and destroyed. Um, it's also the anthropology is also hierarchical, that you're born into a certain order and wherever you find yourself in that ordered universe is where you find your salvation. Uh, their understanding of culture is classicist, which means in Bevins and Schroeder's terminology, that culture is unchanging, that, that culture is not of great interest. Culture is important, um, from a countercultural perspective, that culture can be dangerous, that it can pull you away from the truths of the faith, and that culture is useful for the, for, as a means for the communication of the gospel. So that's a translation model of culture. So culture is not important in itself, except as it threatens Christian faith or as it can be useful for translation. Justo Gonzalez's paradigm B Dorothy Soleil would talk about as the liberal paradigm, which is mission as the discovery of truth. In this paradigm, in recent centuries, Christology would be low. It would be, there would be a focus on the humanity of Christ more than on the divinity of Christ, which doesn't mean that it drops the divinity of Christ, just that it focuses more on the humanity of Christ there is still an understanding of Jesus's work as redemption, but it's redemption through revelation. That it's redemption through, through Jesus as example, as um, the doorway into the vision of who we are called to be. And through that vision, we begin to become what we're called to be. It is an essentially inclusive vision of Christ in the sense that it would say that we see Christ in many forms. Now, it would still seek to proclaim Christ, but to proclaim the Christ that we are encountering in many different forms and to see that 
the ways in which that Christ is connected to the biblical Christ. So it's not completely pluralist, it's a form of modified pluralism. The ecclesiology is mystical communion and sacrament, and, and what um, Bevins and Troder say about that is that in this understanding of Christian faith, everyone is connected to God like the spokes of a wheel, and then because of that, we're all connected to each other. That's the understanding of church as mystical communion. And a sacrament is that we experience in and through the church the, the union with God that is at the core of Christian faith in this understanding of Christian faith. Um, salvation is holistic, that it is material and physical and spiritual. I left out eschatology here, but es the eschatology eschatology in this version is realized in individual that you don't really think about the fulfillment of the future because you experience that in your own life, that as you know Christ, you experience the fullness of Christ and you don't really need to think about the second coming because you have already experienced it. And it is not hierarchical, that it assumes that people are good, if there's a positive, that the, the image of God is stronger than the damage that was done to it in the fall. So people are essentially good and all people are equally essentially good. So there's a very strong sense of equality in the anthropology of this paradigm. Culture was understood uh, in the earliest versions of this paradigm as something fixed. It was then in the 19th century understood as um, empirically that culture was something that you could make and you could use um, that was essentially good and positive. And it's, a, it's an anthropological model in the 20th century and 21st century, which means how do we look at culture in a way that allows us to discern the movement of the Holy Spirit in and through culture. So we assume that there's something that culture is essentially good, but we still have to discern where God is in culture, that we don't assume that everything about culture is good, but we assume that there's sort of a core thread of the movement of God that we can discern. Paradigm C is referred to by Dorothy Soleil as the liberation model, and the key word here is history. The Christology is low, again, not in the sense that it denies the divinity of Christ, but in the sense that it focuses more on the humanity of Christ. The work of Christ is understood as redemption, but the image here is Christus Victor, that there was a battle between Satan and God, and that Jesus, through his death and resurrection, won the battle opening up the way for full liberation. And that is liberation on every level, liberation psychologically, liberation spiritually, liberation in our relationships, liberation in our societies. Um, it is an inclusive and modified pluralist, excuse me, pluralist model in the sense that um, it would say that wherever we encounter liberation, we are encountering Christ. And that doesn't mean that we aren't interested in proclaiming Christ, but we are interested both in proclaiming Christ and in living Christ. And the living has to come first so that we have an experience that we can, or not come first, but the living is central because we have to have an experience of the love of Christ that we can name then as coming from the Christ of Scripture. The ecclesiology is herald slash servant, means that the church is in motion or in action, that the church is proclaiming, that's the herald Christ, and serving, living out the gospel in acts of love and peace and justice. The eschatology is inaugurated, which means that it's not fully realized now, but it's the real is it the experience of the fulfillment of the of history is starts now, but it's not finished now. But it will happen in history, not outside of history. 
So we're not in this model, we're not being, our cells aren't saved for heaven, but rather Jesus is coming back to earth and we will see that salvation on earth. We'll see the fullness of um, God's salvation on earth. Salvation is holistic. It is spiritual and physical and material and on every possible level. Um, the anthropology is positive, but it's modified positive in the sense that the image of God is central and that uh, image is understood as being damaged, but that damage can be significantly addressed here and now. So people can be called to live into their goodness and they can move in that direction. Uh, there is a profound sense here of equality again also that all people can live into that. Their understanding of culture initially was also classicist and then empirical as it moved into the Enlightenment. But um, in recent centuries, there's been a praxis understanding of culture. And uh, Bevins and Schroeder explain that or define it as culture being something that is shaped, it's dynamic, it's shaped um, constantly, and that we are called as Christians to be part of the shaping of culture. And even though there are aspects of culture in that process that we have to fight, there are other aspects of culture that we can enjoy, praise God for, and support.